Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're glad you're here. We're uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 today. It'll be our chapter for the reading uh, and the preaching from the Word of God today, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Glad to welcome those also on the internet. Um, chapter 10, 1 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant now that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. You remember that when the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt. <clears throat> and were all baptized unto Moses in the clouds and the sea. <clears throat> there's not only water baptism, there's several different kind of baptisms in the Bible. <clears throat> we make a mistake by thinking every time the word says baptize, it means by water. It doesn't. This is baptism in the clouds. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was back in the Old Testament with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Remember that, that it wasn't, he wasn't just something from the New Testament, but he was with them all the way in the Old Testament. A lot of people don't realize that, but it tells us this right here, doesn't it? But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, remember, when they came out of uh, Egypt, uh, how did they get out of Egypt? The plagues were given, and the last plague was the plague of the death of the firstborn. Remember that. It was called the Passover. The death angel came over, and if you are not a believer, now we're, we're in 1 Corinthians 10. What page is that on in our uh, pew Bible so those that don't have it can find it? I'd like everyone to follow along in the Bible. Oh, 1359. 1359. In the Pew Bibles, if you just grab your Pew Bible, they're all the same. We only have one Bible. Uh, it's a King James Bible. There's no other Bible in the English language. Now, these things were our examples. Now, remember this. The example of the Jews coming out of Israel, they were delivered with a great deliverance. They took a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, uh, what, 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 what was the barrier that actually they came through that destroyed the enemy. It was the Red Sea, wasn't it? It was the Red Sea. The sea parted. The children of Israel got through it. The Egyptians followed them, and the wheels were falling off of their carts. And when the Israelis all got out of the Red Sea, the sea came in and killed all the armies and the Pharaoh of Egypt. Now, the things for our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. So when they came into the wilderness, they weren't thankful for the deliverance, but they lusted after worldly things. That's a lot of times what happens with us, don't we? We lust after worldly things. How many of you say that happens to me? Yeah, we all lust after worldly things. That's not a good thing. Neither be idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We sure got that today, don't we? A lot of people were doing that uh, last night, partying and carrying on and probably waking up about now and uh, maybe later than now, around noon, and had drunken parties last night and everything, and maybe they're figuring on partying today again, huh? going out on the boat or going down to the beach and going, to going to, they got races today. I don't know. Is it on? Are races on again? I know they have, it's, they have all these different races now. It's just not the one race. Uh, what is it? Not, this ain't the 500. This is the 400 or so. I don't know. They have some kind of race, but they have preliminary races and everything. And, uh, it's a bunch of drunken parties and, and, uh, and things of that nature. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them. 
Let's just not worry about that. Just don't worry about that. Uh, uh, Patrick will take care of that. Patrick will take care. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. So we had 23,000 people that God killed because of what? Fornication. We don't think of that at all, do we? We don't think of fornication at all today. Uh, we got fornicators stay in the motel across the street. We got fornicators all up and down. Uh, anybody uh, that doesn't have a, a ain't legally married, they're fornicator or an adulterer, adulteress. We might have a few in church today. Uh, you're lucky you weren't back in the wilderness times. Uh, you might have been one of the 23,000 that was struck dead, huh? The, uh, do you think you think God's very serious about adultery and fornication? I mean, if he struck 23,000 dead, I guess he gets kind of important to God, don't you? It's not important to people today because they say, well, everybody does it. Okay child of the devil God's people don't live that way neither let us tempt Christ as some of them tempted and were destroyed of serpents now remember when the serpents came and uh, the serpents were biting them and uh, what happened uh, Moses was told to uh, make a bra make a brass serpent and put it on a pole and everybody that looked up at the brass that says anybody that looked up at it in faith would be saved and they wouldn't be killed. And, and the serpent's bites wouldn't kill them. But the ones that wouldn't look to God in faith, the serpents would bite them and kill them. And you know, uh, it was a picture of Jesus. Because in John chapter 3, listen carefully now, a lot of times in, in, the, in the Old Testament... Uh, there was a prophecies given that would happen in the New Testament, but in John chapter 3, it says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So as these people that looked in faith and turned from sin, they look to the brazen serpent on the pole. They looked and live. We, we have the song written, look and live. Look and live. That's a song that we have, a gospel song today. And it says, neither let us uh, tempt Christ as some. Uh, it's what we're going to be talking about is verse 10. Now, if you're a real Christian, there's people in here that aren't real Christians. They're supposed Christians. They maybe had joined the church one time or been baptized, but they're not a real Christian. There's not a whole lot of real Christians around because many people just play church. Chair around here somewhere. I, get, I got blood clots in my right leg. And uh, get sore. I don't know when it's going to be gone, but God's got it. God's got me these blood clots, and I'm going to live with them until he takes them away. <laughs> anyway, I got blood clots in my leg. Someone says, oh, be careful. Don't do much. That blood clot could let loose and go up and kill you in a second. That's okay. Like I said before, can't scare me with heaven. <laughs> if I die, I go to heaven. I think God wants me around here to preach a while yet, so I'll sit down here and preach a while. Leg getting kind of sore. But verse 10, this is the message today. If you're a Christian, pay attention to this. If you're not a Christian, pay attention too, because you need to become one. If you don't become a real Christian, you're going to hell. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed 
uh, of the destroyer. Now, all these things were happened to them for our examples that they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Be careful. Don't get cocky and high-minded and think you can stand on your own. Now look at verse 13, and this is the key verse. And we'll finish on this. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. You know, everybody's tempted. We all have the similar temptations. How many of you have been tempted? Come on. And how many, because of your temptations, has taken you to sin? Has it done it for you? Yes, it has for all of us. But now what it's saying here, to a true believer, to a true saved person, it says, there hath no temptation taken you, but is common to man. But God is faithful. Aren't you glad we got a faithful God? Now, he's given us a promise here. And it says, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. So what it's saying is, I talk to uh, people every day. They profess to be a Christian. Whether they are, I'm not sure. They might be, they might not be. But they say they're a Christian, and they say that they have a sin that they can't get rid of. It might be cigarettes. It might be alcohol. It might be marijuana or other drugs. Worst drug problem there is is the legal drug of alcohol. Now we now we got legal marijuana. They said, "Well, we ought to marijuana. We ought to legalize marijuana because alcohol's legal." Who said alcohol's any good? It's the worst drug we have that people are cursed by. We got people in this room that are cursed by the by the legal drug of alcohol, and it's the biggest curse in America. The legal drug of alcohol causes more trouble than all of the illegal drugs and legal drugs, and I'm talking about drugs prescribed by doctors, and uh, people are addicted to them because of it. But the legal drug of alcohol is worse than all the other drugs put together, illegal and legal. And don't forget that. But if you're a Christian, you don't have to be tied up with it. There's people in here that claim Christianity, and I don't know, only you know, if you, only person I know in the world that surely, sure, for safe for sure is me. I can't speak for nobody else. I can look at you and see how you live and see what you do. And if you live a, a life that looks good, uh, you could be a Christian, but not for sure. Because there's people that are going to go to hell that says, Lord, in, in thy name I've cast out devils. And I've done this, and I've done that, and I've done the other thing. And the Lord Jesus Christ will say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. He'll say, You were a preacher, you were an evangelist, you were a Sunday school teacher, you were a deacon. You were supposedly a good Christian, but you were a phony. And he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know there's going to be people go to hell that you think, you and I think they'll be going to heaven, but you're going to see them in heaven and go to hell because they're phonies. But if you're real, you, you don't have sin. No. Because 13, this is the promise. Now, if you're a real Christian, read this again with me. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Now there's people in this church right here now that I believe they are Christians, but they got a certain sin or sins that have you. And the devil's convinced you that you can't quit it. 
But the devil's a liar, you know, and he's the father of liars. Do you understand that? The devil's the father of all lies. He's the father of lies. But God had said, there is no temptation, not a single one, taken you, but such as common to man. Everybody's tempted. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, above which ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. It means that you can be tempted, but God will give you a way out. Isn't that clear? How many of you say that you can read that and clearly, does it clearly say that or not? Is that a promise of the word of God or not? Yes, it is. Now, you might stick with your alcohol or your cigarettes or your adultery or fornication and lying and stealing and laziness and so on and so forth. You know why you'll stick to it? It's not because you can't get rid of it as a Christian. It's because you love it. You love it more than God, and you won't give it up. And you are a backslidden Christian. You, are back you know if you're a real Christian. If you're not, you ought to become one today. Only you know if you're really saved. You can tell the preacher you're saved. You can tell others you're saved. But the only one really knows you're saved is yourself and God. So you need to make a, a decision today. You need to be uh, sincere in your heart. First of all, you need to be sure you're saved. And when the Bible says, if you've repented of your sins, if you've seen your evil way and your wicked heart and you've turned from it with an honest heart and been saved, then you become a child of God. And a child of God does not have to sin. You've got to believe God and his word. There hath no temptation taken you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. What is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above your evil, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye be able to bear it. Now, that, that's what I'm telling you. You don't have to. Now, some of your problem is the reason that you can't quit your drinking or smoking or shacking up or lying or stealing or wickedness because you're not a real Christian. You're not saved. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So if you're not really saved, you can't quit sinning. Because only saved people can quit sinning through the power of God. Do you understand? Does it make sense to you? That's what the Bible says. So maybe the reason that you can't kid us, quit a certain sin or sins is because you're not saved. You better, you better face it because the Bible says you must be born again. You must be born again. You said you've read this verse several times. Well, I'm going to read it again. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation wake a man of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. That's the real Christians. Now, some of you ain't real Christians here and on the Internet. And if you're not a real Christian, you need to become a real Christian. You know, God demands first place. Christianity isn't joining some organization like the Elks Club or some other organization. But it's becoming... It's becoming a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ and having fellowship with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and being born again 
and then becoming a part of a local church like this of true believers that study the word of God together and fellowship together and go out into a wicked world, not be part of it, but snatch people out of the fires of hell that are not saved and get them saved and bring them to church. That's what Christianity is all about. Getting people saved and they becoming part of the local church. We call ours Baptist. It doesn't have to be called Baptist. It could have a different name. But it has to be a, a group of true believers that believe in our take care of the ordinance of the church, believers' baptism, and the Lord's Supper. Those are the two ordinances of the church. Neither one of them say, but they're an important part of the church, you understand. And that's what we want to do at our local church. We have believers here that are true born-again believers, blood-washed child of God. I saved April 4th, 1969. Do you have a getting saved day? If you don't, you're not saved. <clears throat> you say, well, I've always believed. Can't, that ain't possible. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. You can't always be a believer. There has to be a marked place in your life when you're born again. Do you have that? Do you know it? Have you experienced it? If not, you need to do it today. If you're out in the viewing audience or if you're here in the church service. Jesus said you must be born again that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit you must be born again i'm born again april 4th 1969 19310 glenwood lane new berlin wisconsin in my living room i knelt at my couch my wife knelt at the couch she prayed for herself, and I prayed for myself. She couldn't do it for me. I couldn't do it for her. I meant business in my heart. I think she did, too. But I could only speak for myself, you understand. It's a wonderful thing to be saved. April 1969, 79, 89, 99, 109, 119, 50. <laughs> And three, 53 years I've been saved. Amen. Well, glory. You got to get saved day. You better have. That's the day I was born again. If you're not born again, you're lost. If you are born again, you don't have to sin. You sin because you want to. Like I said, I, you ought to memorize this verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I've said it over a number of times in the preaching service this morning. I'll say it once more and we'll close. There hath no temptation taken you, <clears throat> but such as common to man. <clears throat> but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what we are able, but will with temptation make a way of escape that we may bear it. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. Are you saved, dear one? You know if you are or not. Don't try to fool me. Don't try to fool others. You certainly can't fool God. <clears throat> and I hope you're not self-deceiving yourself. Got some kind of false hope. Must be born again. Old things are passed away. Has that ever happened in your life? Has your life changed? As all things become new, that's what happens with real saved people. Maybe you've never been really saved. I don't know. Only you know. Let's close it in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the new birth experience. We're thankful, Lord, that gave us the example of the people that came out of Egypt. They sinned in the wilderness and Twenty-three thousand of adulterers were killed. People were bitten by snakes and killed for other things too, and some were saved. 
Never the majority gets saved. It's always the few. It's always the small crowd. Not many will enter to the straight gate and be saved. Most go to hell because they love sin and live by it. If you've never been honest in your heart, trusted Christ and been born again, would you be honest today? This is the sinner's prayer. Are you here in the church audience or are you out in the viewing audience? When you say, Lord, I, I'm just not really saved. I've never really been converted. Old things have never changed. I'm still living in sin. I've, I'm not a different person. Old things have not passed away and all things have not become new. I need to be saved today. Well, if you do, you know it and God knows it. And would you pray this sinner's prayer with me? Would you admit that you have a wicked heart and you need to be born again and be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ? Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. And the best I know how, with an honest, sincere heart, I turn from my sins, admitting my sins, confessing my sins, repenting of my sins, and I call upon you this very moment for salvation. Save me now, Lord. Save me. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Save me now. I've never been saved. I'm being honest about it now. I'm turning from my sins. Save me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. And if you're a Christian and you know you're saved, but you're backslidden, and this wonderful verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation taking you, but is common to man. But God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted, above which you are able, but with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it. Lord, I am a Christian. I know I'm a Christian, but I've been living in sin. And I can escape that temptation, and you'll give me a way of escape. And I trust you, Lord God, and I believe in you, and I trust you now. And I pray for your mercy and grace that you'll keep me from that sin as you promised to. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.